The skill of relaxation is a fundamental component of running fast. It is very hard to master because it is a counterintuitive process. A sprinter should balance contradictory impulses, exerting maximum efforts and being relaxed at the same time. Playing the piano is a good example of such relaxation, when fingers run along the keys quickly and effortlessly. The pianist presses a key with a certain finger, while the other fingers are completely relaxed so the wrong keys aren't struck at the same time. Something very similar happens during running. Elite sprinters have very efficient intermuscular coordination. They can contract their muscles very quickly and just as quickly relax them. This is very important because the muscles that contract in a certain phase of the running cycle must quickly relax in the next phase. Otherwise, they will oppose the muscles that in the current phase are involved in the forward movement. If that is the case, the body starts tensing up, using more energy and losing speed. Sprinters often tense their bodies without even realizing that they're doing so. The tension most often occurs when they try too hard. It is a common misconception that one can create a bigger force by trying harder. But it is worth noting that in any sport only the net force matters. The net force is the amount of force delivered in the desired direction minus the force generated by the antagonist muscle at the same moment. In simple words, the harder you try, the slower you go. Even world-class sprinters sometimes get confused with that. They feel that relaxed and effortless sprinting can't generate enough speed, so they're trying to put in a little more effort. When the whole body is tense, there is a false sense of greater force production. In reality, it only reduces the net force and increases speed loss. It is very much like driving a car and pushing the gas and brake pedals at once. In 2007, Asafa Powell came to the World Championships in Osaka as the 100m world record holder. In the final, he was very quick out of the blocks and had a clear lead up to 60 meters of the race when he saw Tyson Gay, his biggest rival, overtaking him. He panicked and immediately tightened up, trying too hard to maintain the lead. After being passed by Gay, he gave up, allowing Derek Atkins to pass him 10 meters before the finish line. Interestingly enough, two weeks later, at Rieti Grand Prix, in the absence of his main rivals, Asafa Powell ran effortlessly and relaxed, easing up 5 meters before the finish while still breaking his own world record. A pianist with tense fingers always plays out of tune. Similarly, a lot of sprinters get into trouble because of overdoing things in big races. Because trying harder against stronger competitors just doesn't work. You can't go all out from the start and expect a good time in the finish. Top-notch sprint requires strength, relaxation and very accurate effort distribution along the whole race. Lawrence Griffith Joyner, the best technician in the history of women's sprint running, she set the world records with a smile. Not trying to win the start, she picked up speed smoothly and patiently, demonstrating exceptional relaxation and perfect race distribution. Following the example of the fastest woman of all time, it should be noted, if you run at maximum speed and cannot smile, then you're trying way too hard.